Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition. Now there is a lot to talk about. I believe this is the first time Magic the Gathering Hasbro is selling booster packs directly to consumers online from an online store they own. Now what is the Guilds of Ravnica? It is $249.99. It's rumored to be limited edition to get that hype up. And it's going to be sold strictly from a Hasbro Pro website. Which means you cannot get it from a distributor. You cannot get it from local game store. And you cannot get it from a Walmart or Target or Barnes & Noble or a GameStop. This type of behavior is very common in other collectibles like Funko. Uh, Funko, my friend, is a she is a really into collecting Funko, and every Friday or once a week, they have a special limited edition Funko figure, and the only way you can get it is by going to their website. There's no other way to get this figure. Now, sometimes, depending on the figure, I know serial characters, uh, breakfast serial characters were really popular. They would sell out um, minutes after it was released. Now they also have an app. So the artwork is very beautiful. And if you want this Elspeth and you think this artwork is amazing, then the only way you can get it is not only paying $250, but you also have to get in line and hope that you check out in a very fast way. One of the core problems is the fact that people like the San Diego Comic Con we can use that as kind of a barometer of what normally happens. They use bots and these bots automatically purchase. This is the same problem that you have with Funko is a lot, a lot of these independent places like Sumi Box, they have these programs which will automate the buying of, you just load up a bunch of credit cards, load up a bunch of addresses and it will automate the buying of these collectibles and Hasbro never knows the difference. Uh, people also use this for HubSpot and ticket buying, concert tickets. Um, a lot. Of, this happens a lot. Whenever you have an online good that is more valuable than the price on the store, you're going to have these people with these bots. Now, the artwork looks good. Uh, I, I've mentioned before, it looks like someone on someone that's been loving Reddit. It looks like a Redditor. You know how the most popular posts on Reddit are not about, oh, what's the best deck or people stealing or cheating or uh, predators. The number one Reddit posts are always these altered cards. Now, some of them look really good, but most of them are just fill in the line background cards. So I don't want to take anything away from an artist who does that. But when you fill in the background, I forget what it's called, but it's not a true alter in my opinion. A true alter would, would be, hey, let's just redo the whole card. This is just, oh, let me find some green to put some more leaves in the background. And oh, it's called a, a frame. So what happens is they, it's background frame. And that's what these cards are. They're not anything, in my opinion, particularly special. They don't. They will be valuable only because they are planeswalkers. So let's go over what we have gotten so far. We've gotten the masterpieces, which began with the expeditions. Then we moved on to instant, instant sorceries and uh, creatures. So yeah, Scarab God's creature. And then we are now moving on to Planeswalkers. So we have run out of masterpieces that we can do, types of masterpieces we can do, unless I'm missing a type. So creativity, these are not super creative. These are copy and paste. You've already made these Planeswalkers. Uh, the artwork is new-ish, but uh, in my opinion, they're not too creative. And now we're going to sell this product. A lot of you will say, oh, okay, what's the big deal? Who cares? If you like it, buy it. If you don't like it, don't buy it. The big deal isn't the planeswalkers. 
The big deal is that this set comes with half a box, 18 booster packs of Guilds of Ravnica. Why this is important is it will be the first time Wizard of the Coast is selling booster packs to its consumers directly. Anyone who buys this is much more likely to buy, or let's say they would buy multiple boxes, maybe instead they buy one less box. Because this product comes with packs, the necessity of going to your game store to buy packs is less. Walmart and Target and Barnes and Noble and GameStop, they're always going to be safe, especially Walmart and Target with their mystery packs, their mystery cubes, their mystery whatever. Like literally they have like 10 different mystery planeswalker. They're going to be fine because it's an in-post buy. People don't go to Walmart to buy magic cards. Normally they buy magic cards as a additional add-on buy. But when people don't go to local game stores, they go there just to buy magic cards. Therefore, it is a different mindset. When you go to just buy magic cards, you're gonna be far more price conscious. You're gonna care about the price a lot more than if you, oh, I'm checking out here, let me buy a mystery pack and see what I get. And mystery packs on YouTube, they do 10 times as well as booster boxes. Like it's really insane, right? But it's what people wanna see. People wanna see Walmart mystery packs and there's a Walmart everywhere. According to Wedge, no one has any local game stores. So Wedge, one of the biggest YouTube content creators, he buys all his stuff proudly from Walmart. That's He's not alone. He is not alone. So artwork looks good. The Planeswalkers look pretty good. You got Liliana of the Last Hope. That's a really great Planeswalker to have in something like this, especially in foil. And these also come in foil, by the way. So my overall takeaway is good for consumers who have money, bad for consumers who don't have money because it's a high buy-in. It's a high buy-in unless you want to get fleeced on the secondary market, which you should not want to do. Uh, good for Wizards of Coast, very bad for stores uh, because a store Someone who buys this product is not going to buy a boost, is no longer going to buy that booster box from the store. They might not even buy anything from the store. And it is very, very, it's break even. So it doesn't affect Target, Walmart, it doesn't affect any of those commercial things. So the people it hurts most are magic players who may not have money. Uh, maybe they don't have jobs. Maybe they have a job that doesn't pay that well. Maybe they're in college or high school or even younger. And maybe they're older and they're on Social Security. This is not a product for them. Uh, this is not, I mean, the buy fee of 250 is very, very high for any, any product. That's a Nintendo Switch. What's the Nintendo Switch right now? $300, 250 used. $250 is a Google laptop. It's a, I mean, it give, it's an iPad. We're not talking about a small amount of money here. Now, for a local game store, this is the beginning of the end. Uh, many of my local game stores, they no longer carry magic. And that's by choice. They've, give, they've chosen to give out their WPN because their promos are not worth it. People are not making money from boxes. Magic Core in 2019, the average expected value of a box opening is $65. They pay $76, $78. They can't sell these things. Nothing sells. Uh, Modern Masters 25, the last Modern Masters for, sorry, Masters 25. There's so many of these things. Masters 25, which is going to be the last master set for some time. That one has not done well. That one is currently at 150, 160 right now when it should be at 240. It's supposed to be really good. Celebrating 25 years of magic, which is a major accomplishment. I am going to buy one of these. I, I love the Elspeth and I just love that image of Elspeth. Very Tomb Raider and Tomb Raider is one of my favorite video games of all time. That's a video game I grew up. I actually played it on my PC. I, you know, I have a Sony PlayStation, so I played it on the PC version. And yeah, it's 
it seems, I mean, it looks like Laura Croft. I'm going to buy it. That's just who I am. But man, it sucks for local game stores. And does it suck for the customers who don't have that much money? Uh, Magic should not be an expensive game. I think by making these products, yes, the players who don't have money don't need to buy the product to play the game, but they want the product. And when you have all these expensive things that people want that they cannot afford, historically, even outside Magic, that creates revolutions, that creates all types of injustices. And and when you have the haves and the have-nots, I was watching a video from another Magic YouTuber and he was saying how people got upset that he drove a nice car and um, I don't, you know, I don't think that we should have a big divide economically. So right now there is a, there's two divides right now in our community and one of, and both of them are being pushed upon by Wizards of Coast. One of them is, can you afford this product? Don't worry about it if you can't. And then there's people who can, and they buy the product. Then the product goes up in price. Let's say a reserve list or something, or even these planeswalkers. Well, then the people who cannot, who did not buy the product at the time, are now upset because the product has gone up in price, and now the product's even harder to get. That's pretty much what this planeswalkers are. They're going to be very difficult to get masterpieces. So then on the second issue, you have politics and you have the sponsorship of many channels that are very left-leaning and you have the banning of or the restriction of other channels who are more middle of the road or right-leaning. So I don't know what the long-term plan for Wizards of the Coast is, but this is not a encouraging product. I will buy it and which makes me a hypocrite, right? Because now I'm supporting them with my money, but... I'm buying it just for the Elspeth. Yes, I can buy singles, but I do not want to be butchered on the secondary market. And that is what I'm afraid is going to happen to me. If I do not buy this product at the 250, what am I paying for Elspeth a single? Maybe, I don't know, $80? Like, I don't want to do that. I'll just get the, I'll just get the whole product, right? But it does feel bad. Um, it does feel really, really bad. Uh, Magic is getting really expensive with the master products, with the supplement. I mean, Commander is a Commander, which is supposed to be the format for the people, the cheap format, the fun format. I mean, they just boosted the MSRP and then filled it with crap. Like, I'll be honest, Commander was uh, any channel that's telling Commander 2018 was a good set. You do not want to listen to them anymore because that is very bad. The expected value, I mean, it just comes down to math. It always comes down to math. And the math tells me that if people buy this product, people are going to buy less booster boxes from the stores or less booster packs from the store because why would they need to buy booster packs anymore? They have them right now and they, it's kind of like a bonus. The danger is not these planeswalkers. The danger is the half a box that comes with it. Because eventually, what is the next test that will happen? Why don't we just sell a booster box for $80? Let's get, see how many people buy it. As soon as that happens, it's all over for a local game store. It's done. Why would you ever buy, why would you ever buy something? Now, people will still buy packs from Walmart because, again, there is that convenience. Oh, I'm shopping for dinner. Oh, here's some packs. Oh, I'll just buy this Mystic Cube. It seems entertaining to me as a casual player that does not care about value. So all the casual players that don't care about value, they're going to buy stuff from Walmart because they're not going to even know that they have a local game store, i.e. Weds. I'm sure Weds has a local game store. I'm sure he has one. He just doesn't know where it is because, you know, that's, that's, too, much, that's too much for him to do. Uh, well, anyway, my... I like the product. I'm going to buy it, but it feels bad for me to buy it. Like, I, I don't feel like I should buy it, but uh, I mean, you know, I pay a lot of money for altars and this is like the cheapest. I mean, I pay, what's it? 50, $60 for an altar. Um, there's no way. I mean, for the play mats, a lot of you ask how much I play for pay for the play mats. Um, 
depends on characters by on average 150 150 for two characters uh, and then I'd play I don't know if shipping is included or not but those are custom for altered cards I mean you're looking at eighty dollars for eighty to hundred for a full altar for an altar like this which is a border extent it's called a border extension you're looking at twenty to forty dollars depending on the work of the depending on the actual art from the original planeswalker and I pay that all the time so if, it's $40 on top of the Planeswalker. For me, this is really a good deal, uh, given what I spend my money on. Now, I'm sure there's be a limit to one of them, one person, one box a per person, but if I could buy four, I would buy four. But it feels bad. I feel like I should not be buying this product because it encourages, it, encourages them to make more of this crappy product or this type of product. And that is going to discourage the player base. Like I can tell you, and I'll use one example. I know this is a long video, but I, I want to get straight to the point. The reason that people buy fake Chinese counterfeit cards is not because they cannot proxy the cards. It's not because they can't draw uh, a fake card. And it's because they want people to feel like they're rich. That's why they buy these fake cards and put them in cubes when they could buy less realistic cards and pokemon the cards are very unrealistic like i'll show you some fake pokemon cards because no one cares the card is going to be reprinted in a box just the next month there's no value in it there's no long-term value in it but for magic yeah people want to have a deck that has the underground seas and you know one of the questions i always get is why can't people just like proxy them and draw them and just have them like altered or print them out at kinkos but be so so different from the original why do people need the exact same one why do people want the chinese counterfeit as close to real as possible it's because they want to be rich they want to be one of the people that are the haves everyone wants to be that the haves they want to live in a big house they want to have a white picket fence they want to have a boat they want stuff. They want to drive a Lexus. But how, that is a terrible way to look at life. It really is. And more and more of the Magic player base, the have-nots, are being segmented. And I think that is... Uh, you. Your player base should not, I do not care if your deck sucks. I do not care if your deck uses proxies. I don't care about any of this stuff. We should be able to have a good time because we like the same game. And that's just not true anymore. Uh, so that's my biggest example I can give you of why people, of what's going on with our community is based on the fact that people buy magic count buy chinese counterfeits because they want to be the haves they want to appear rich they want to appear wealthy they want to impress their friends their play group but the question is why do you have to do that why is a hand-drawn proxy worse than a fake chinese counterfeit to so many people it's because they want to pretend or they they want to be in the halves but there's no reason for that in my opinion i could get into a, a rant about um but i know a lot of you don't like my personal rants so i'll keep it out it's already a 19 minute video hi guys